controlled system to avoid any unwanted protein degradation. First, it must be primed for action by an E1 ubiquitin activating enzyme. This process also requires energy in the form of ATP or adenosine triphosphate. The activated ubiquitin is then transferred from the E1 onto a second enzyme called an E2 ubiquitin conjugating enzyme. This enzyme acts as an escort for ubiquitin to its next destination, the E3 ligase enzyme. The E3 enzyme acts as a platform on which the target protein substrate and the active E2 ubiquitin complex can meet and interact. The E3 enzyme is extremely fussy about exactly which E2 enzyme and which protein can interact. The correct E2 enzyme loaded with activated ubiquitin can move and position itself correctly on the E3 ready for action. When both protein and ubiquitin are loaded onto the E3 enzyme, they're brought close enough together for the ubiquitin to be transferred to the target protein substrate either directly from the E2 or through a short hop via the E3. This process can be repeated several times to create a polyubiquitin chain on the protein. The creation of this chain is the death knell for the protein. It provides a clear signal to the cell's waste disposal unit, the proteasome, to start work. The proteasome binds and removes the polyubiquitin chain and unfolds the protein. The protein is threaded through the proteasome chamber where it's chopped up into building blocks to be reused for the synthesis of new proteins. The ubiquitin can also be recycled. As we've seen, the UPS is a critical process in controlling cell function. When protein degradation gets out of balance, disease results. We believe that better understanding of how the system works could help us develop drugs to treat many devastating diseases. Currently, there is one drug on the market which takes advantage of the ubiquitin proteasm system. Velcade, which is approved for the treatment of a subset of cancers, inhibits the proteasm itself and leads to the destruction of cancer cells through a build-up of toxic proteins. However, this inhibiting action is relatively non-specific. Exactly how the UPS process works is the subject of intensive research. Looking at the E3 enzyme more closely, we can see that it's a complex structure which may have different mechanisms for identifying and capturing different target protein substrates. We know that in humans there are two types of E1 enzyme, approximately 60 types of E2, and between 6 and 800 types of E3. In other words, potentially nearly 90,000 different combinations. The program is concentrating on E3, which uses the F-box connection. The aim is to identify where drugs could be developed either to amplify